On April 26, 1986, the reactor 4 of Chernobyl burst open. An atomic wound opened. Thousands of people were affected. People who walked unprepared into this area faced instant death or death a few years later. This was the first man-made radioactive accident which happened and the scars of Chernobyl exist even today with so many ghost cities existing. But in this area, there is a species which is existing which has not only survived this radiation but it is thriving in it. We are going to speak today about a black fungus which is actually eating this radiation. Hi guys, in today's video, let's discuss about this black fungus which is growing in this Chernobyl area which is not actually doing what it is supposed to do but it is eating this radiation and surviving and what potential it holds for our future in space as well as the very survival of mankind on earth how this black fungus is going to help us. Let's go straight into the video. To really understand how this black fungus is thriving there we need to know what happened in Chernobyl. It was April 26, 1986, the reactor 4, there was a safety test. This Chernobyl incident is actually a combination of system error, human error and utter disregard for safety. Ironically, a test was done to test the safety of the reactor. There was a problem with the positive void coefficient. Let's not get into the science behind it. Basically, instead of cooling the reactor down, it actually sped up the reaction and that led to a disaster which led to the 2000 pound lead lid which was there in the nuclear reactor to blow up and all the radioactive elements started dissipating into the air. Two workers were killed instantly. Of all the firefighters who went in, 134 developed acute radiation syndrome and a lot more firefighters were affected in the later period of their life. And eventually the Soviet Union that time created an exclusion zone which was about 30 kilometers and then they later extended this exclusion zone to about 4100 square kilometer area. This is actually present in present day Ukraine that is near the region of Belarus. This area is actually not inhabitable by human beings but a small group of settlers are even there now telling that they are going to reconnect with their roots. This is the scale of this disaster. But there is a fungus species which has thrived there. Let's see more about this fungus now. For years now, this Chernobyl story was one that of human error gross disregard for safety. This exclusion zone was actually studied to check what happens when humans disregard safety in a nuclear reactor. In 1991, a robot was sent inside the area where the blast happened. And to their surprise, they found some black mold there, that is fungus there. They were confused. This was an area which will kill humans if they enter within minutes or the electronics in these robotics get fried if they are present there for a certain amount of time. But how can a fungus grow? They took this fungus and went to the lab. In the lab, they found out that they were from the Cryptococcus as well as the Cladosporium species. On examining this fungus, they found that this fungus has high quantity of melanin in it. This melanin is present in the human body also. It is usually to protect us from the UV radiation. Initially, they thought that this melanin content of this fungus is what is preventing it from getting killed by this radiation. But on further examination, they found out that this fungus is attracted towards radiation. It was exhibiting radiotropism. This is like a leaf in a plant turning itself towards the sun. We can see that the plants need sunlight. Similarly, this fungus also needs this radiation to grow. So has this fungus in evolution developed a mechanism where it can eat this radiation and it can start growing was the question in the scientist's mind and a detective story started. On further examination, they found details which could question our very theory of evolution and actually how this fungus thrived in an environment which will kill humans in minutes kill the electronics in the robotics if it stays for a certain amount of time. Let's see what it is. Scientists found out that this melanin pigment inside the fungus which we already discussed is the one which is responsible for it to thrive in this radiation environment. They follow a method which is known as radiosynthesis which can be equated to photosynthesis. That is what plants use chlorophyll 
to get energy from the sunlight, use the carbon dioxide and water to produce food for it. Similar is the radiosynthesis. So what this fungus does is, these fungi have melanin. What this melanin does is, when it is hit by these ionizing radiations, the electrons in it gets excited and it causes more energy to them and it gives them the ATP. This ATP is the universal cellular energy. So when this ATP is present in the fungus, that is more than enough for it to function. So this is the most probable theory scientists say that this fungus is able to survive in this radiation environment. They also did a study in a university to find out whether this is true and they found out that this fungi with melanin grew better in a radiation environment than fungi without melanin. So, did these fungi magically appear after 1986 in the Chernobyl area? No. This fungi were already there because earth also is exposed to a lot of radiation but that was low amount of radiation. But when it suddenly got this environment that is an area filled with ionizing radiation that gene, the melanin gene inside these particular fungi which was laying dormant for so many years got expressed and this particular species of fungi from the Cryptococcus and the Cladosporium species who had a lot of melanin thrived there and they found a perfect environment for them to grow. See, now the question in everybody's mind will be, okay, a fungus grows in radiation, what use it's going to have? The use of this fungus is first going to be in space exploration. See, usually once you cross the Earth's magnetic field, you're going to be exposed to a lot of ionizing radiations. So, to protect us from that, usually rockets are lined with lead, but this lead is very heavy. Suppose you're going on a long mission to Mars and you're taking a rocket and going already it is heavy and you have to cover it with lead, then that is going to make the rocket too heavy, needing a lot of fuel to lift the rocket off from the Earth's gravity. Now, suppose if this fungus can protect us from that radiation was the question. So they took some of this fungi and took it to the International Space Station and they kept this mold and exposed it to the radiation. They found out that 1.7 milliliter thickness of this fungus could block about 2% of the cosmic radiation and they found that these fungi which were exposed to this radiation grew 21% times faster than the fungi which were not exposed to this radiation. So you have a fungi which can block the radiation and also use this radiation to grow. So where it is going to be useful? Rather than placing it in rockets to protect us from radiation, the moment we go to moon or Mars to inhabit those areas, you have to build habitats. When you build those habitats, you have to protect yourself from these harmful cosmic radiations. So what if we can build a building and in the outer layer, keep and cover where this fungi can grow and this fungi can block this cosmic radiation. See, this 2% blocking of cosmic radiation might sound only simple because there is rest 98% of cosmic radiation present. But when you actually put it in numbers, they say that it can produce up to 21% of cosmic radiation block. So when this fungus can grow to that numbers where it can produce a full radiation block, then you will have a building where it is lined with this fungus as a protective agent from these cosmic radiation and inhabitation in moon as well as Mars is possible because this time you don't need to carry lot of lead which is so heavy to go there and build buildings but instead you just have to go carry a fungus you can put it in the outer layer it will only grow by itself and it will produce the protection you need. See, building buildings in Mars, Moon is all far away. Let's see where this fungus can be used today. The most important use it's going to have is where any place where nuclear reactors leak. When there is a nuclear reactor leak, it is going to cause danger not only to the place where it is happening, but to a huge area around it. But what if we can introduce this fungus because this fungus eats this radiation to live. So if you introduce this fungus, it will actually try to reduce the amount of leak in such a way that it will give us time to actually act and do the needful. That is its first use. The second use is it can be used as a biosensor. That is, if somebody is working in these radiation areas, in their protective gear, a layer of fungus can be placed in a glass box in such a way that it will function like a dosimeter to tell you actually how much radiation is there. The third thing is it can be used in the medical field. See, many cancers require radiation for their treatment. 
but radiation not only destroys the cancer tissue, it destroys the normal tissue around it also. So, this fungus which contains melanin, a melanin based pigment derived from this fungus can be made as an ointment which can be applied on the skin, especially in the normal tissues in such a way that the radiation effect on the normal tissues can be avoided and only the cancer cells are destroyed. These applications are immense. Of course, a lot of trials are needed for this. But thinking that a fungus can grow on radiation and it has this much applications is fascinating and it has to be thoroughly seen and checked whether it can be put into use. In the end, this Chernobyl radiation eating fungus is a perfect paradox. It is a perfect example of life from death or creation from destruction. A place which caused intense death and destruction left a void and these fungi captured that moment, entered that and used this radiation to thrive. It has a lot of applications also. But when we see this, we can see that in the most harsh environments where life cannot withstand for even minutes, these fungi were able to thrive. This actually brings us a question of about our evolution process and how much we actually know about it and how this evolution happened and this fungi is a testament to that. Do like, share and subscribe me for more interesting videos and please drop down your views in the comments below.